Thanks to an incredibly kind donation from John Baldry, I now have this awesome Luke Skywalker and Yoda Jedi Training 2-pack from the Star Wars Black Series line in my collection. And this means that I now have every single character in every different version that was available for the scenes on Dagobah. The only thing missing is a 1-6 scale X-Wing, but I doubt uh, Hasbro will ever make one of those. Now, rather than reviewing this Action Figure 2 pack, I thought I'd try something a little bit different today and show you guys how to set up a bit of a Dagobah diorama for photographing your Star Wars Black Series figures. Well, I'm going to try anyway. Do or do not. There is no try. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, I'm Tony from Analog Toys and the first thing I should state up front is I am no photography expert. As a matter of fact, I don't really photograph toys. I film toys to share in videos with you guys. So I'm not an expert, but what we're gonna try and do today is step you through how to set up a bit of a simple Dagobah diorama for photographing your Star Wars Black Series figures. Now, the first thing you'll need is a better backdrop than the one I've got here. Ideally, a dark gray color would, uh, would suit this scene best. I don't have dark gray available, uh, but on the wall just to the right of me here, um, I have a black backdrop that I use in some of the videos. So first of all, we're gonna move over to the black backdrop. Now, the first thing you're gonna want to do is position the table in front of the backdrop, the table that we're gonna build the diorama on. And what you want to do is position the table about six to eight inches away from the wall. That's gonna enable us later on to put a bit of a, um, a backlight up underneath. Now the next thing you're going to need is a roll of uh, terrain, for want of a better word. Basically, I've got you know a green grass one and a sort of desert sandy one here. You can buy these in like railway modeling shops and that kind of a thing. Um, neither of these colors is ideally suited to Dagobah, which was a kind of a, uh, a dark brown on the ground, lots of sort of broken leaves and dead leaves. But I think here the green is far too green, so we're gonna go with the sandy colored version. And we're just simply going to roll this out and lay it on the table. Once we've got the base terrain laid down, you then want to try and recreate the uh, low-hanging misty fog that was prevalent all across the Dagobah scenes. And what I'm going to use for this is some imitation cobwebs that I purchased during Halloween. Spread these out across the uh, base terrain and you'll see it gives a very nice effect of misty fog. And now that we have the first two elements laid down, this is gonna be the most difficult piece to acquire to really give that Dagobah scene some texture. And what you're gonna need is some scaled down kind of tree root type looking objects. And what I've got here, um, I simply picked up from a, uh, a, a fish shop. You know, this is the kind of thing you put in a fish tank. I've got two of these. So I can't recommend where to buy them. Uh, I bought, bought these a long time ago, um, but an ideal place to look around is in a pet store that sells fish tank type items. So I'm going to place these onto the display, uh, basically framing the shots with one on either side. And what I want to do is actually line this up with the camera to make sure that it fits within the sort of 16 to 9 ratio of the frame. Once the tree trunks are in position, I want to give them a little bit more colour. So I'm scattering along the top some small pieces of modeling foliage. Again, you can pick up bags of this stuff very cheaply at a modeling shop. And as you can see, now that we've got the foliage applied, it just adds a little bit more color, a little bit more depth to the shot. We're then going to add a sampling of small rocks. Uh, ideally, you want some really sort of smooth pebbles for this. This is kind of all I could find locally hunting around in my backyard, but these will do for now. And now the scene is pretty much set. It's quite simple, really. You know, this is not gonna be anything uh, exactly photorealistic to the movie, but it, it, it looks quite nice for doing a bit of photography. What we need to do now is light the scene. And what I have in the studio is these two soft lights. But to get the best effect for the Dagobah scene, I'm gonna turn one of these studio lights off and have the other one um, sort of 45 degrees off to the left-hand side. And now I want to add a backlight to the scene and I'm simply going to take a, a warm bedside lamp I'm going to place it underneath the table uh, this one here I've got to prop up on a few books to get the right height and that's going to provide a backlight to the scene 
And as you can see here, when I turn it on, uh, I just love the way the light filters through that imitation cobweb, you know, that, that Dagobah misty fog. And we're all set to go. Now what you've got to do is start adding in your figures and this is where it gets really, really fun. First of all, I want to photograph Luke in his pilot's uniform with R2-D2. We put the pistol in his hand, we stand him there with R2-D2, and this is the kind of effect you can get uh, with a very simple diorama setup and these two awesome Black Series figures. Next up, I want to photograph the scene where Luke in his ground fatigue uniform is having his kind of first interactions with Yoda. And in order to achieve this scene, um, what I've added here is a couple of ammo crates from the Rambo Savage Strike Headquarters playset. Uh, it doesn't look exactly like the, you know, the boxes and pieces of cargo that Luke had in the film, um, but it'll do for now. And here we are with Yoda, Luke and R2-D2 during their kind of first encounter. And now that I've got those two scenes filmed, here comes the main event. We're going to crack open this Jedi training Luke Skywalker and Yoda 2-pack and take a few different shots of Luke during his training on Dagobah. And first of all, I've decided to photograph Luke here with Yoda in the blue training backpack. And as you can see, the results are quite incredible. I'm very, very pleased with the way this has turned out. Now, one of the quite amazing things with this two pack is that Luke Skywalker comes with interchangeable hands. So first of all, he's got this kind of uh, force use hand. It's a shame that he doesn't come with an interchangeable head with his eyes closed, but you know, it still makes a, a good alternate photography option. But this hand here is the one I'm most excited about. This hand enables you to set Luke up in the handstand position. Not quite sure how easy this is gonna to be to get him to balance, but let's give it a go. Okay, so I've managed to get Luke to handstand, but as you'll remember from the movie, uh, he did this with Yoda balancing on one of his feet. Not sure if we're gonna achieve this shot or not, but let's give it a try. And there you have it, an absolute wealth of different photography options with a few Black Series figures and a few little pieces used to set up a, a diorama. And this is an incredibly fun way to spend an afternoon. You know, setting up your figures in different poses, slightly different scenes. Um, I've really enjoyed myself making this video. And I hope that you've enjoyed watching it. And if you also do uh, sort of Star Wars style diorama photography or diorama photography for any toy line, we'd love to hear about it. Um, you know, send us your pictures via our Facebook page and we'll share them with the rest of the community. And before I sign off, Let's just take another quick look at a few more photography shots that I've managed to capture with this Dagobah diorama. So thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to check out our other videos about Star Wars Black Series figures, you can click the playlist right here. Or to check out our Toy Histories episode where we cover the entire vintage Kenner Star Wars line, you can click right here. I'm Tony from Analog Toys and I'll see you in the next video.